What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to build professional CLI applications and parse arguments using the arc parse package in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about the arc parse package in this video today, which is a core Python package that allows us to easily parse command line arguments for our applications in Python. And what this basically looks like is the same it looks like for almost all command line applications. If you use something like grab, for example, you can provide certain options, parameters, uh, arguments, and you can also use the help option to see how to properly use this tool. So you have all the different options here. And this is true for almost every command line tool. So curl, for example, I can also get the information here, how to use it, what the arguments are, and what the different options are. So this is what we're going to do in Python today. How can we add our own options and arguments to our command line applications in an easy way. So for this, we're going to open up a new Python file and we're going to call it adder.py because we're going to build a simple adder. Now you can call this whatever you want, but the idea of this tool is it's going to be able to add numbers. And in addition to that, we're going to have different options on how to display the result and what to do with the result, just so we can go through the example here. So we're going to start by importing the arc parse package, which as I mentioned, is a core Python package, so we don't need to install it. And what we're going to do first is we're going to define a parser instance. So parser equals argument parser, or actually arc parse argument parser. And to this parser, now we can add certain arguments. And we have different types of arguments that we can add. So we can say parser at argument. And now we can add a positional argument. So something that has to be provided after the name of the tool. So in this case, add or py and then some value that is not specified with a flag, or we can specify different flags. So to give you a simple example of this, we're going to call this first argument greeting. This is going to be how this tool greets us as a user. And what we're going to specify here is just the word greeting, and then we're going to say help equals and the description of what this does, basically. So uh, the greeting message displayed, something like this. Now, if we keep it like that, if that is basically our whole tool, what we can do now is we can say arguments equals parser dot parse arguments, and we can just print the arguments as a whole, or we can print specifically one key, which in our case would be greeting. And now if I open up the command line to navigate to this direction, to this directory here, I can say Python three uh, adder, and it will tell me usage adder py greeting error, the following arguments are required greeting because I didn't provide anything. If I say hello, for example, it's going to print the greeting and this is the dictionary, basically the namespace greeting equals hello. Um, and I can also use the help option. So I can say dash H to see how to use this. This is automatically generated, I don't have to provide this myself. So you can see already, this is quite convenient, I can define arguments, and then I can parse the arguments and I can get them here as a dictionary sort of. Now, this is a positional argument, what I can also do is I can specify flags, so options, essentially. And how I do this is I basically say dash and then a character, for example, let's say n. And then let me just remove all of this here, then we provide a second version, which is the double dash um, version where I have the full word, which is numbers in my case. Um, and then we can specify different things. So for example, I can specify a data type, I can say that the numbers that I want to provide here are floats. Uh, so by default, we get strings, if I provide float, I get actual numbers from the command line. Um, and then what we can also do is we can say uh, that I want to have multiple arguments. So I can say the number of arguments that I want to accept here are two. So I want to have two numbers, not just one value. So it's a dash n, and then I would provide two values, not just one value. And then of course, we have a help text again, the numbers to be added. For example, this is quite simple. What I can do now, first of all, is I can print, of course, the numbers if provided. Uh, and I can also, I can say if arguments dot numbers is not none, I can print the result of the addition. So arcs, numbers, this is then of course a list 
numbers one. Uh, then I can go ahead and I can just uh, run this again with hello. If I don't provide anything, you can just see I have none here because the numbers are not provided. If I now go ahead and say dash n, and I just provide one number, it will tell me expected two arguments. If I provide a second number, it's going to give me the result of the addition. And you can see this is now what the uh, numbers object looks like. So 30 is the result of 10 plus 20, of course. Um, yeah, so that is basically the idea of having these options here. Now we can also go ahead and specify an unlimited amount of numbers. So I can say that I want to have a star here an asterisk. And this basically means I can have as many, <laughs> sorry, as many numbers as I want. So I can say, print sum, and then rx numbers. And then I could provide more numbers, as you can see. So this also works. <clears throat> now, what we can also do is we can limit the choices. So for example, I might want to add an argument called verbosity. So how much I want to display dash uh, v and dash dash verbose or verbosity. And then I can say that this is a type integer. And I want to have certain choices, the choices are basically a limited list, 0, 1, 2. And um, yeah, I can then provide also help text determines how much info is displayed, or something like this. And then basically, I can just go ahead and say, um, I can I can basically make a distinction if rx dot verbosity is none, then I can basically say, just print the result of the so I can basically just do this, just print the result of the calculation and maybe also print uh, the greeting. So that's the minimum thing. Then maybe I can do also uh, else and then I can say if the value is zero, I can do the same thing. Probably there's a more intelligent way to structure this. Uh, and then I can say basically, okay, if I also have the verbosity being equal to, uh, or actually, maybe we should say greater than or equal to, and then I can say, okay, if it's not zero, or if it's also greater than or equal to one, then I can print some extra stuff. I don't know, maybe the arcs numbers, you can you can decide what you want to do here. And then you can say if it's two, in addition to all this stuff above velocity, I can print some extra information. So extra info, or something like this. So this would then add um, this extra option. So I can say here again, let me just zoom in a little bit. I can say Python three, uh, on, Python three, adder py. And then I can say, hello, I can say dash n 10 20 30. And then I can say dash v zero, then I would get this dash v one, I would get more dash v two, I would get even more than that. And then if I say three, it will tell me that this is an invalid choice. This is not something that I can do. Um, now I can also add now other arguments. So for example, uh, I'm not going to go through this whole thing now because it doesn't really matter. But I could also add a um, f flag here or a dash dash file flag, which basically is of type uh, string. And then instead of putting this out, instead of always printing this, I could save this in an uh, output string, and then I could write it to a file. So I can say if uh, file is not none, then use the file type or, or the file name here as the path and then write it to a file instead of printing it. Uh, but one last thing that I want to show you here is you can also have Boolean flags. So you can have flags that you don't need to specify any additional arguments for. So in this case, we say dash n and we provide numbers. Here we say dash v and we provide also numbers. I can also say parser at argument and then I can say maybe something like debug dash dash debug. And I can say the action here is store true, so store true. And then we can describe this as enables debug mode. 
And then now basically it is either going to be true or false. It will not be none. If it's not specified, it's going to be false. If it's specified, it's going to be true. And then basically we can use this to decide uh, what to do. So one thing that I could do is I can say import time. I'm just making something up right now. And I can say here if args debug, I can say start equals time perf counter. Then I can do this in the end as well. With end. And I can print end minus start. Only if debug is enabled. So I can basically run the same thing here, you can see, and then I can basically say dash dash debug and you would get the time measurement. So yeah, this is how you can use the core Python package arc parse to easily and professionally parse command line arguments for your application. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.